Okay, so today Jen and I are going to be discussing what is dark romance and coming up with a scale. And so I just want to read this definition from paperback model that kind of explains how we feel what dark romance is and then we're going to dive deeper into it. So this is how they say what dark romance is. Dark romance is where passion intertwines with forbidden desires and tainted love dances with the darkness. We are immersed in a genre that thrives on sparking the senses by weaving contradicting emotions and power dynamics around the very best and worst unconventional relationships. End quote. You want me to go first, Jen? Uh, Should you say hi? (laughs) Hello. Okay, so to me, dark romance, (laughs) dark romance pushes boundaries. It's on the fringes of society. It has topics of forbidden and taboo, and it's not accepted within the standards of modern society. It has like unconventional norms. And then, of course, the triggers and the content warnings. Yep. It's what I feel like all composes what dark romance is. But Jen and I were just doing some research for this and we were checking out some lists and there are books listed on there that we don't quite agree with. So that's why we're going to come up with the scale and break it down. So one of the, maybe we should use Fifty Shades as like a base point or should we I use think something else? No, I, you know, it's funny. I was thinking the same thing. I think Fifty Shades is one that's really well known. Like the content is really well known. I think it gives us a good like base to go off of. Okay. And that would be like a one star. <laughs> Fifty Shades, I feel like would be a one star for me with Dark Romance. So like one star as in... It's just not that dark or what, like, one star because it's 50 Shades of Grey. And, like, we've all, like, matured so much since then. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so this is how we're going to do the scale. It's going to be either based on the romance, like the couple. Mm -hmm. Is that dark? Is it the environment that makes it dark? Or is it the themes that make it dark? Or all three. Or all three. I don't think any of these are an issue with Fifty Shades. BDSM is a very popular kink. It's not dark. It's just a sexual preference. I totally agree that the the BDSM, like the Dom Sub themes throughout that series, don't classify it as dark. I feel like BDSM is its own genre, right? But I feel like what could or what likely got B, or, uh, Fifty Shades on the dark romance list is the abuse that Christian went through as a child and the probably what um, that the one spanking scene in book one that was like borderline too much. For her, obviously. Like, yeah, you know, I don't think he fully educated her prior to that. Granted, she pushed him, but still, I don't, I think those are the, really the only two things that would push it into the dark genre. I agree with that. And I'm even going to go a step further and say that that little bit of taboo where he's talking about how the reason why he likes the brunette subs is because it reminds, his, reminds him of his mom. That... But that is just like, all, even all those things, it's a tiny drop within the series, right? Like it's not, I don't, I don't know. I feel like, I don't, I don't think it's a dark romance. I completely agree. I think, like you said, like there are a couple of dark themes. because, And the other one I remembered is he did end up subbing as a child for his mother's best friend. Mm-hmm. So like, again, I, I agree that there are dark themes. So then another thing to add to the layer of defining it is whether or not it happens on page or off page. Mm. Right? Because we don't see the abuse. We learn it secondhand. So I feel like that. So I feel like if we're doing the scale, like one would be things that are off page. Okay. Right? You can have the themes and the dark content, but if it's off page... Yeah? Yeah, I like it. Well, but, like, it can be anything off-page. It could be, like, the content was off-page. It could be that, you know, I mean, oh, my gosh, a popular dark theme is, like, what you were saying earlier, like, mafia 
serial killer like if it's not on the page like it just it lowers the rating Mm -hmm. yeah because i've been deceived by reading a mafia romance and there's like they're just in the mafia right and they got money and that's it and they have henchmen and nothing else and i'm like this is not a dark romance (laughs) so that would be like off the page so that would be like a one star or one check or what do we want do we want it to be stars no i was thinking we could do skulls oh my gosh yes one skull okay so one skull for dark romance means the the elements whether it's the romance the environment or the theme happens off page yep i love that okay so now we need to do two skulls okay what do we go what, what, <laughs> i feel like the spectrum is just like off page on page and then well i feel like it's then it's like a matter of uh, okay so i think a good potentially depending on where we land on this scale a good two skull could be there are no saints there is no devil because he only kills on page one time and then that's really the only time that you like have like you're going through that scene with him Mm -hmm. okay how would we break that down though i think it's a matter of like if it only happens on page let's say between one and three times in an entire series two to three books then like it, we're not gonna up level it okay so for reference for one skull it's 50 shades for two skulls we're doing the no saints series as our baseline yeah yeah for now are we okay with that for now yeah <laughs> i may change by the end of this yeah exactly <laughs> okay <laughs> Um, okay, let's back up. What is the darkest romance novel you have read? Okay, so that's a great question. That you feel to you. Do you need to think? Because I can tell you mine too. Okay, yeah, you go first. And then tell me like what happened on the page and like what the themes are. And then I can kind of go off of that. Okay, so this, I read Consequences, the first book by Aletha Romig. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. But this was before I got into dark romance. And I could not finish the series. I only read book one because of the abuse so he marries this woman for revenge and like beats her and like sexually assaults her while they're married and then like does the gas eye and the manipulation and i read that in like the mid 2000s and that was like really i i could probably read it now and it not be a problem but that was like i was like there's no way i can read the rest of this series like he set her up for like pretending to murder him and like that was in the part it was just the way that he treated her and her being so naive and i just i i i, I couldn't do that so that's one and then on the same spectrum Tilly Cole has the Hangman series and I got to like book three or four because I have an issue with cults and having sex with little girls as an excuse because of whatever power they believe in. So those two are like though like 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 I said I got to like book four three or four and like I, I had to take a break because it was just too it was too much I couldn't but I've I've read bodice rippers like I've read like other things serial killers like lots of non-com like but those two for whatever reason there was just something triggering that was just like ah I need I need to go watch like I don't know what's a good palate cleanser bluey cookie monster on no <laughs> Right, like something like Blue's Clues, like something to like. <laughs> so those are like my two, I think, for triggering dark for me. Okay, so I've read Still Beating by Jennifer Harmon, and that is like on a lot of like the dark romance lists, and that didn't really bother me. So the, just to give you the audience like y'all some backstory, the ones that did, or the one, is Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. There, what triggered me were there were multiple. I'm talking like I can think of four or five at least, probably considerably more than that. Um. It explicit rape and sexual assault and abuse um, scenes to her from the main male characters. And I feel like that's another line in Dark Romance, like where so many times like you have those themes, but like not with who, you know, the female ends up with. And that is that was the case in in this book. And it I mean, there are very mixed reviews on like if it ends in a happy ever after. I was happy with how it ended, but it was still very just 
it was too, it, I got about 71% in and I ended up posting on Facebook, like, does she end up happy? Because if she doesn't, I am out. Like, I am not going through this with her anymore. Like, this is heart wrenching. Um, so that was the most triggering, almost couldn't finish book for me. I would say the next one for me would be Hunting and Haunting Adeline by H.D. Uh, Carlton. I didn't struggle so much with those. It was more like, this is really fun. And I, you know, I struggled more once, spoiler alert, so skip ahead 30 seconds if you don't want to know, like once she was captured and like sold into um, sex work, like that's where it really, really bothered me. But everything up to that, like him being a stalker and a serial unaliver and like those things, like that, that all was fine. (laughs) I have not read either of those, but I feel like I need to now. Okay. So now let's talk about why we like dark romance. Do you want to go first, Jen, or do you want I me to? I can go first. You have a lot more experience in this than I do. <laughs> so I like it because it's it's a darker aspect, but also because it's unpredictable. Like we know how a romance novel is going to end. Boy meets girl. They fall in love. There's a miscommunication 90% of the time, especially if it's contemporary or some kind of black moment, they break up and then they come back together, right? Tale as old as time, which is fine. But with the darker romance, while yes, that is part of it, it's not always the case. It might not always be girl meets boy. It might be boy sees girl, he stalks her, <laughs> then kidnaps her, and then, you know, and like it just... <laughs> You never know what you're going to get. Are they going to kill each other? Are they going to fall in love? Are they going to go murder somebody else? Like, is it mafia? Like, is somebody trying to take over? Is it the Irish mob? Like, you just don't know, right? Maybe he was stalking her or she was stalking him and then somebody tries to kill him and then she intervenes. And then, you know, it's just, I love it because I love the morally gray and I love the anti-villain. But most importantly, I think, is because I don't know, have you seen that meme on social media where it's like the hero will not do everything to protect you, mm-hmm. right? His, his job is to like protect everybody else. Mm-hmm. But the villain's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to destroy the fucking world for you. Right. And I like that aspect because I think being a first priority in a romance novel is important. I like it. <laughs> That's mine. Okay. So thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> I would have to say, like, okay, I wanted to start doing a dark romance buddy read because we're entering spooky season and I needed books to go with my spooky season aesthetic. <laughs> but, <laughs> however, I I think one of the reasons why I was drawn to it is it is it is the unpredictability of it. It's the constant, like, on your toes – type of thought process because I've always like my when I read books it was almost always crime paranormal like when I've started you know 15 16 really getting into like novels and now as an adult the other thing that I like about dark romance is they just do spice so well and that's one thing that contemporary, although I love my Tessa Bailey and I love my Lucy Score and I love my Emily Henry, and you get some of that spice, it's just not the same. Like there is no one being strapped down to a table and given like 25 orgasms within, you know, a few <laughs> hour period. Like that just doesn't happen with Lucy Score's books, which is fine. But like, I like my spice. So dark romance does spice so well. I I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. And it's, and it's not always vanilla, right? right? It's not always in the bedroom. It's not always with one person. It's not always with just people. Like, yeah, (laughs) the variety I think is better in dark romance for sure. Just people. (laughs) That's a good point though. (laughs) I mean, it's true. That needs to go on a t-shirt. Objects and fruit and fruit. (laughs) Why did my brain go to like tails? That's going to be our first merch item, Jen. (laughs) 
<laughs> I wasn't even thinking. I didn't even get to the monster mash or the aliens yet. That's like totally. That's a whole other. But yeah, I guess. Okay, so here's a question for you. Do you totally sidetrack? Do you think that monster romance or alien romance? Sh- well, I guess it depends. Ba- okay, never mind. I was gonna say, do you think it would fall under dark romance? But because it's you know bestiality with the monsters, almost right? Like yeah, in some cases, even yeah. if it's a contemporary theme because you know it's a wendigo or like whatever it is it's still it's that taboo anyways okay so yeah i don't even know how to how to put that down well and i think it's gonna be personal it's part of it's gonna be personal preference Mm -hmm. too because like you know your triggers my triggers may not trigger other people where like the triggers that didn't bother me in you know haunting adeline especially when she's stalking him or he's stalking her and chasing her and that sort of thing like that could very easily trigger somebody else yeah what if i don't know if that worked maybe three skulls would be if the or even the three skulls could be if the darker romance is the relationship like maybe if it's like forbidden or taboo Mm -hmm. stepbrother stepsister or like credence with you know penelope douglas with the brothers and the was it a step uncle or was he really her uncle i can't i think we talk about this all the time it was step never remember yes yeah we we do and it's step it was step uncle (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we all know where mine's at. Well, Uncle Jake is a hottie with a body. Yeah, he is. Maybe that's how we need to break up the break it up. Three skulls would be like if the dark romance is the relationship. Yeah. And that's yeah. So are we maxing at three skulls or was it is it gonna be like three skulls? And then four, five schools is where it's all three themes. Like the relationship is taboo. You have content warnings and the environment is dark. I think five schools should have all three. Okay. Agreed. Um, Definitely. Just because like you said, like it's personal. So then maybe we only have. So maybe this is what we do. Maybe one star or one skull is off page. Okay. Two skull would be the relationship. Three skull would be um the environment. And then four skull would be the theme. Okay. And then five skull would be all, all of them. Okay. I like it. Are we, did we like that? Yeah. Because I feel like, and that fits with no saints being the baseline for the relationship because, you know, he was stalking her. Like he did the, well, you have to do this. Otherwise you're going to die, whether by my hand or whatever the other dude's name was. Shaw, right? Maybe. You know how I am with names. Yes, I do. Okay. So to recap. One skull, off page. Two skull, relationship. Three skull, environment. Four skulls, themes. And five skulls, all three of those. I like it. Well, technically it'd be all four because then it would be on page. Yeah. Okay. Love it. Is there anything else we need to talk about with dark romance? I don't think so. I think we worked out our dark romance scale. I feel like... uh, Okay, so to give our listeners like what we're going to be scaling when we review the books we're going to be scaling the dark romance the spiciness and then our rating for the book overall do we have a scale for spiciness i was just about to see if i could find the scale that i really liked on (laughs) book talk the other day is that the tiktok that you sent me did i you sent me one i mean i sent you lots (laughs) I, I'm pretty sure you sent me one. Because I really liked that scale. I probably did send it to you. I found it. Yay! Okay, so here's her scale. A bell pepper is closed door, fade to black. One chili pepper is less than three scenes. Two is some, but not tons. And it's not super descriptive. So think like Emily Henry, if you've ever read her. That's who I think. Of course, she might be a one too. Three, giving us all the deets, making us sweat. And then four would be lots of smut, but not necessarily very kinky. And then five is lots of smut and the kinks. I like that spicy level. I could be down with that. Okay. You want to go ahead and explain the overall rating system? Okay. So to let y'all know, here's the scale. It's Misty's scale. And one star is just no, like it's not something that we would recommend. Two is, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't appetizing. Three is it was good. We enjoyed it. You should totally check it out. Four is it was good. There was a little something extra that pulled at me. And five is devoured, couldn't put it down or, and, or was surprised by it. That should conclude this episode. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Listeners, let us know how you define dark romance. What would be your rating system and list the most darkest romance 
novel you have read. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us on the journey into the shadows of love, where dark romance stories come to light. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Bones of the Story as much as we did. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. Your feedback means the world to us. And to stay updated on all things dark romance, follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. We'd also love to hear from you. Share your thoughts, ideas, or even your own dark romance stories with us. Drop us a line at bonesofthestory at gmail.com. Remember, our next tantalizing episode is just around the corner, so keep your hearts open and your senses sharp. Until then, embrace the darkness and let the stories continue to stir your deepest desires. This is Misty and Jen signing signing off from from Bones Bones of the Story. Story.